Yo, what is going on? This is Philip Jean Marie, aka Max Cooper. I'm actually here at the Power Morphicon and I wanted to show you my wonderful helmet. Um, I also wanted to uh, shout out everyone who watched uh, Power Rangers Wild Force and even the, the old fans and the new fans. I um, also want to let you guys know, uh, shout out to Tiger Tales. It's an audio storytelling uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, make sure to go ahead and like and subscribe. And also wanted to let you know, uh, you know, if uh, you're going through some issues in life, remember three words, never give up. All right? So I hope everyone is doing well. Love you a lot. Peace. Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into Universe 113, my very first universe created on Tiger Tales, but also it hosts my very first storyline ever uploaded, Power Rangers Future Foundation. In recent chapters, our Time Force Blue Ranger has been stealing cars and selling them and helping out a crime boss, whilst at the same time our In Space Pink Ranger has to go see her mother who's in a coma but in the same room as her mother is a young boy and every time she speaks to the young boy there seems to be the sound of an elephant so she tries to investigate in this chapter we may actually get some conclusion maybe we won't you guys are just gonna have to stick around and find out power rangers future foundation chapter 37 two monsters in one day Amy sat next to her mother. She read her the newspaper and told her what's been going on with the team. When suddenly she heard the sound of an elephant once again, Amy stood up and walked over to the boy who had been sharing a room with her mother. The boy was an African-American descent. His hair was short and he had a green crystal necklace around his neck. She heard the elephant once more. Who are you? Amy asked. Then suddenly her communicator beeped. She checked to make sure no one was around and no one was about to enter the room. Then she answered. Hey CJ, what's up? Amy said into her communicator, keeping her voice down. Amy, we need you here now, CJ Bart. On my way, Amy nodded. Then she grabbed her bag, leaned in to kiss her mother's head. See you later, love you, she told her mum. Then she headed to the dojo. Amy joined the team in front of CJ. Seems like Los has been busy, and we have two monsters attacking two different spots, CJ explained. Okay, let's split up and take these things down. Luca, Amy, you and me. Leo and Chloe, take down the second one. Dante ordered. Gotcha, Chloe nodded. Then everyone ran out of the dojo, except for Amy, who stayed behind. You okay? CJ asked. Yeah, can I ask you to look into something for me? Amy asked. Sure, CJ said, intrigued. My mother's currently sharing a room with a teen boy. I was wondering if you could work out who he is, maybe kind of work your magic? Amy asked. Sure, I'll see what I can do, CJ told her. Amy grinned and ran off to catch up with the others. Dante, Luca and Amy ran into the construction yard and found a drill monster terrorising the construction workers. Yo, ugly, you're not paid to be here, Luca called out. The monsters turned to the trio. Ooh, new playthings, the monster chuckled. Ha, <laughs> you wish, Amy grinned. Ready, guys? Dante asked as he held up his wrist, showing his silver ground morpher clipped to its wristband. Luca and Amy both revealed their morphers as well. Dante pulled off the ground morpher, flipped it open and pressed the centre button, then threw his other hand out as he held his ground morpher to his ear. Luca crossed his wrist and then pressed the button on the chronomorpher. Amy flipped open the astromorpher and pressed the three-digit code. World access, Dante called out. Time for time force, Luca yelled. Let's rock it, yo! Amy said. Then in a flash of silver, blue and pink, the Wild Force Silver Ranger, the Time Force Blue Ranger and the In Space Pink Ranger stood before the drill monster. It's drilling time! The monster roared. The drill monster ran out the rangers. The Blue Ranger ran over to the construction workers and pulled one to his feet. Come on, get to safety, keep going! The Blue Ranger demanded. The Silver Ranger jumped up and kicked the monster, but a spinning... 
Drill collided into the ranger's torso, sparks rippling off of him, and then he hit the floor. The pink ranger ran in and punched the monster several times, then ducked and swung her foot out, kicking the monster in the leg, making it stagger. The blue ranger landed next to the monster, grabbed its arm, and held it back with his free hand. He swung his chrono saber and slashed the monster. The monster managed to throw the ranger off of it. The pink ranger pulled out her blaster and started blasting it several times. The silver ranger and the blue rangers used their sabers to slash the monster simultaneously. Then the pink ranger jumped up and slammed both her feet into the monster. The monster staggered back, fell over, and exploded. That was easy. <laughs> really easy. The blue ranger cheered as the trio of rangers all fist bumped. Chloe and Leo ran into the train station and saw a train-themed monster terrorising the scared civilians as they scurried to safety. We'd better make sure those trains are on time, Chloe chuckled. Chloe revealed her dino gem that shifted into her dino morpher. Then she opened the mouthpiece and pressed the button. Dino Thunder, power up, she called out. Leo pulled out his growl morpher, flipped it open, pressed the centre button, and then he held the phone to his ear. What access? Leo called out. Then in a flash of yellow and red, the monster turned to see the Dino Thunder Yellow Ranger and the Wild Force Red Ranger. The Yellow Ranger summoned her terror grips and dived at the monster. She then slashed the monster several times. The Red Ranger pulled out his crystal saber and joined in. The train monster lights on its torso flashed and shot energy blasts at the two rangers, sparks flying off their suits as they got hit. They both dropped to the floor. Both rangers climbed to their feet, but the train monster revved its engines and charged at the two rangers. It sped past both of them, hitting them hard. This train is always on time, the monster growled. Both rangers jumped to their feet and pulled out their blasters and started firing upon the train monster as it turned around and ran back towards the rangers at full speed. Keep him busy, the red ranger told the yellow ranger. The yellow ranger nodded and then she jumped up and flipped over the charging monster. She slammed down on the ground, slashing down with her saber, slashing the monster in the back. The monster turned around and threw a punch, hitting the yellow ranger straight in the chest. She grabbed onto the monster, the red ranger extended his claws, ran up one of the walls of the train station, then back flipped off of it. He then pulled out his lion blaster in midair and as he fell down towards the ground, he aimed the blaster and fired it with power Effect accuracy, each blast hitting the monster directly. The Yellow Ranger let go of the monster as each strike hit the monster. The monster then fell back and exploded. The Red Ranger landed on the ground where the monster once stood. Both rangers ran up to each other and high-fived. Nice job, the Yellow Ranger cheered. Have you been teleported to the past? Or de-aged to look like a kid again? Or have you delivered a message to some strange woman who asks questions all the time? And are you stuck? Well, cool. TARDIS Taxis. The taxi service that don't get you where you want to go, but where you need to go. To book TARDIS Taxis, simply call the number in last week's paper. Bookings are six months in advance. We cannot rearrange your booking, as it may rip a hole in the space-time continuum. Refunds are at the discretion of the Time Lords. Call TARDIS Taxis, and we will get you home one day. All the rangers grouped back up at the dojo, with a sense of victory amongst the air. Well done guys, that was quick and on point, Dante nodded. A bit odd though, neither of them grew big, Luca stated. This has actually gone against Lucicon's main course of action completely, CJ sighed. Maybe it wasn't Lucicon, Amy said with a shrug. The whole group looked at each other with a worried look. Let's get on with our day, and if another monster pop up, we can keep an eye on what happens. Dante said. Everyone agreed, then left to do their own thing. Amy walked up to CJ, who passed her a piece of paper. Hey, what's this? Amy asked. Your mystery coma kid. I got his name. It's Elliot. He is 17 and was a foster kid until he was adopted by Master Fant, a master in the ways of the claw. That's his address. Now, Master Fant died a few years ago, but something at his place might help you find out who this kid is, CJ told her. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Amy said with a grin. Then she headed out and headed to the house of the legendary Master Fant. CJ turned around and then held her hand out and a small ball of light appeared in her hands. William, I gave Amy the information. You got a new recruit incoming, CJ said into the ball of light. Amy ran a few steps, then slid down the path on her heelys. As she saw the wooden house, she stopped. This is where I lived. But it's in the middle of nowhere, Amy muttered to herself. She walked up to the wooden house and knocked on it. She just knocked again, but received no reply. 
You ain't going to get an answer in there, said a voice behind her. She turned around and saw a spirit stood before her. Well, are you a ghost? Amy asked. Her body flinched, readying itself to drop into a fighting stance. My name is Master Fant, the spirit said. Oh, wow, okay, no, that makes a lot more sense now. Uh, I've heard you guys can come in spirit form, Amy sighed. You'll hear about my student, Elliot, Master Fant said. Yeah, he's currently in a coma, Amy nodded. He went after something, and he's not been in the right mindset for, Master Fant explained. Oh, what was he after? Amy asked. I died of old age. My human form could not handle the time I'd spent on the physical realm of existence. Elliot took my death rather hard, tried to learn my fighting style with the flailed mace, and tried to master the ways of the elephant spirit. It did not work, and there was a terrible accident. He's been in the hospital ever since, Master Fan explained. I keep hearing an elephant whenever I'm around Elliot, Amy said. It seems like his elephant spirit is trying to get your attention. Maybe it needs your help to save him, Master Fan sighed. I can try, Master Fan, for sure, Amy said with determination. If you need me, call for me. I'll answer and try my best to help you, Master Fan replied. You seem like a very gentle for an old guy, Amy remarked. I never was. One of my students, Lily, reminded me how to approach with my heart, not my rage, Master Fan said. Elliot was lucky to have you. I promise I'll do whatever I can to help him. Amy said. The spirit nodded, then phased away, and Amy went back to the dojo to see if she could find out more information. Luca walked into a cafe and ordered a cup to go of coffee. Then he turned around and saw Mr. Brock stood before him. Uh, what are you doing here, Brock? Luca asked. I came to thank you for your delivery the other day, Mr. Brock said with a grin. You could have just called me, you know, Luca retorted. I wanted to give you another job, Mr. Brock told him. No thanks, Luca said. He turned around and grabbed his to-go cup. Then he went to leave with Mr. Brox in front of him, blocking his path. Listen here, kid. I'm in no need of your service. I could kill you, ditch you, and completely forget about you. But I don't like getting my hands dirty. So do me a favor and just do the job, okay? I'll text you the details tomorrow. And there won't be any funny business if you get it done, Mr. Brock muttered. Then Mr. Brock put a pair of sunglasses on and left the cafe. Luca stood there and let out a long sigh. Lucicon stood there in his temple and flipped one of the long dinner tables over. Where did those monsters come from? I'm the king of this universe, Lucicon barked. I do not know, my love, Lucicon's wife sighed. Lucicon placed his hand on his crystals in his chest. I only have four lives left. I still not found my human form, Lucicon growled. And what would you have me do, my beloved? His wife sighed, placing her hand on his shoulder. Find out who's been making monsters and bring them to me! Lucicon roared. If you've enjoyed this story, then make sure you check out the rest of Universe 113. The other storylines are Power Rangers Future Generations, Power Rangers Vengeful Vanguard, and Kama Rider Guy. That being said, let's get on with our outro. Thank you everybody for listening to this video and checking out the stories. Of course, there are plenty more where that came from. I encourage you to check out the rest of this channel where you'll find more storylines for you to delve into. But there's even more than that. If you check out the description down below, you will find a whole array of different Tiger Tales channels. Each Tiger Tales channel is made for a specific purpose and hosts a whole array of different types of storylines. So, I encourage you to check out the other Tiger Tales channels and delve into a massive amount of storytelling by myself and the Tiger Tales partners. If you have enjoyed yourself today, then please subscribe to the channel as it does show your support. Now, of course, the whole reason why I'm doing this is because I'm passionate about story writing and storytelling. And, of course, you should dive into what you are passionate about as well. So, I shall end this video with... Roll with passion. That before we can. <laughs> Don't touch my Pringles. <laughs> Bye.